Hi guys, thanks for tuning in to another video episode on ForgottenWeapons.com. We're at the Rock Island auction again today, taking a look at some neat automatic pistols, and one that they have actually a couple examples of is this model 1913 Webley & Scott automatic. This is the naval model, uh, what Webley & Scott was, was able to successfully sell to the British Royal Navy. Uh, the, the story of the development of this pistol is really kind of interesting and, and pretty extensive. Um, Webley and Scott had an engineer named William John Whiting who started working on their automatic pistol designs way back in uh, about 1903. Uh, he, he decided to take on the project of developing a semi-auto pistol for the 455 rimmed British service cartridge, which was no mean feat. Um, a big rimmed revolver round in a semi-auto is not an easy task. Um, his first, first trials were uh, 1904, 1905, 1906 uh, era, and eh, they worked to some extent. Uh, he kept pushing at it. They ended up making some smaller pistols for the commercial market as well. So by the time 1913 rolled around, the Royal Navy had tested these pistols a number of times and found them quite satisfactory. Uh, it's kind of interesting that the British Navy was very interested in going to a self-loader, while the British Army not so much. Um, the British Army really remained unconvinced that they needed to replace their revolvers, so they basically weren't willing to accept a self-loading pistol of any type, no matter how good it was. Um, and by the end here, this Webley & Scott was really quite a good pistol. Um, it is a uh, recoil-operated pistol, so the, the barrel has a pair of angled uh, rails that run inside, or angled I guess rails is a probably a decent term, that run inside a pair of slots here and a locking block right here that locks into the ejection port. You can see the barrel drops very slightly from the side. You can see the barrel drop. Uh, recoil causes it to slide in its grooves. We'll have a picture of what it looks like internally. Um, and that, that keeps it as a locked breech pistol, which is necessary for a large 45 like this. Um, does lock open on an empty magazine. One particularly interesting element um, that was included at the Navy's request was this. You'll see on the bottom of the magazine, there are, there's not one, but two separate magazine catches. Well, the Navy wanted a magazine disconnect, much like many of the rifles of the time had, so that you could keep the magazine full and then individually load cartridges into the pistol for firing. And in order to do that, Webley cut a second magazine catch. So if you put the magazine in, it's locked here. That'll hold the magazine in place and not feed. And then if you decide you need the ammo, you push the catch button in, fully uh, insert the magazine, and then continue. Then, then you can actually use the magazine to fire all the cartridges. So we have a bolt release here, or a slide release, I suppose it is have a nice big grip safety. So unfortunately for Webley, um, World War I obviously started just after these were adopted, and uh, the, the developing war really kind of ended the Navy's interest in, in following, following up on the self-loading pistol. They, they pretty much lost interest, and by 1917, uh, production was over on these. So. Uh, there were some other military sales, not in huge number, and there were some commercial sales of this, but ultimately Whiting and, and Webley did all the work to get this pistol actually working, only to see uh, World War I pretty much destroy any interest in it. So they remain a fairly rare pistol today and uh, a neat addition to anyone's collection. So we would like to thank Rock Island for letting us take a look at this one, and I uh, hope you guys enjoyed it. Tune back into ForgottenWeapons.com for more military handguns.